What is your treasure? Today we delve further into the story of It's a Wonderful Life and the scripture and what the scripture tells us from Paul's letters to Timothy. We had our second session, a small group session, to discuss our relationships with money. And last week, the discussion centered around family of origin, what you learned about money, what, um, what environment you grew up in, and how that has informed how you handle money these days, how you have trained your children or taught your children, how you um, live with feelings of abundance or not enough. And it started, we, our discussion started with uh, a quote from the movie, from the angel Clarence Odd Body to George. And he's, the angel says to George, you've been given a great gift, George, a chance to see what the world would be like without you. Strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives and when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? Today, I invite you to think about what kind of a hole you will leave in this world after you're gone. We live an incarnational faith, meaning we believe just like Jesus, that our faith is not just an idea, but it's how we live our lives. Jesus didn't just think about God, Jesus lived the way God wants us to live, and showed us and talked to us over and over in parables and in stories and in just um, his very being, his very teaching, his healing, his acceptance of the outsider, his dining with the least of these. He showed us what was important about living and about faith. We talked this uh, week in our class about what it would be like if you were told that in five or 10 years you would be dead and you wouldn't, you would still have fully functioning life until then, but you very suddenly would die after that. And we pondered what that would mean for how we live our life. Now, several of the people in the group were said, we're already living that life. We're 80. <laughs> um, some people have had health challenges that have made them think of it and let's be honest most of us um, especially back in march wondered if the covid virus was going to take us out and you know given the rates of um of the spread of it um many people are experiencing that and so this gives us some pause and and um maybe you have given some thought to how am i living my life and is this is this the way I want to live it? Are these the people I want to spend time with? Or is this where I want to put my energy? And as a church congregation, and those of you watching who maybe are watching for the first time or you're new to our congregation, we all have that call on our lives. And our scripture reading this morning from 1 Timothy shows us that people have thought about this since the beginning of time. And I just want to read from... Um, another translation this is the message translation and the um the one read by tim huey was um was a different translation and this is what paul is telling timothy to tell his people to tell his congregation tell those rich in this world's wealth to quit being so full of themselves and so obsessed with money which is here today and gone tomorrow tell them to go after God who piles on all the riches we could ever manage to do good, to be rich and helping others, to be extravagantly generous. If they do that, they'll build a treasury that will last, gaining life that is truly life. This isn't to say that money is evil or having money is bad. It's saying that if we put our faith in our finances, if we put our faith in our 401k, our retirement fund, our stock market, social security, um, the value of our house, you name it, that we're missing the opportunity to live with the security that goes beyond that. We miss the opportunity to see the growth in ourselves and in other people 
when we actually share, when we, um, when we're extravagant with others, when we, um, what does it say, help others, when we do good, those are the ways in which God fills us up. We heard stories in our small group of people who had made extravagant gifts to other people or unexpected monetary gifts to people, of people who um, have the gift of hospitality and have been able to make people feel very welcome with their gift of uh, their spirit and gift of cooking, those kinds of things. There are many gifts we have. Of course, our finances are one of them, and sometimes that's exactly what somebody needs. Um, but we also have the gifts of who we are as a person that we can also share. And those are the, um, those are the, the actions in our life that actually bring us satisfaction and completion and, um, and peace. Um, it, it makes me think about the, um, I, I just was listening to um, one of the podcasts from participating in the 21 day challenge with United Way where they talked about somebody who needed to um, fix their car and they didn't have the $800 and nobody in their family did because everybody was just barely hanging on. And this person lost their job, which then led to many, many other things. And oftentimes we want to help people with the systemic problems when actually what they just needed was the $800, right? Um, so sometimes finances are very important, but also our gifts and our, um, the gifts that we have, the talents we have, and also the gifts that we grow into. It's important to continue to learn and grow. We have a saying that God is still speaking. We, we believe that the scriptures are right and true and to be trusted and they continue to speak to us. And those of us who have participated in the weekly Bible studies, we're surprised, well, we're not surprised anymore, but every week these ancient texts 2,000 years ago speak to our lives today. And we continue to grow our, um, our faith and our knowledge and our wisdom that way. Also in our, um, one of the other things I wanna think talk about today is also this whole idea of stewardship because we are in that season of the of the church year when we talk about we talk about well, sometimes we don't talk about finances but you know talking about finances one of the things in small groups we're talking about is hard to talk about and we are learning that um, we have to think about stewardship in a new way this year so first of all I wanted to tell you what the Oxford language is um, tells us what the definition of stewardship is. And it says the job of supervising or taking care of something such as an organization or property. And that fits very perfectly. We were talking in our um, council meeting, which is open to everybody. It's the information is in our, um, in our weekly, or it comes once a month. We have our meetings on the first, first Tuesday of the month. And the email before that will tell you how to get on by Zoom, and you're welcome to be a guest and to listen into the workings of the, of the church leadership, financial and planning and, and all of that, to learn more about how we work here at Edwards. We're, we're, we're an open book. Um, and we were talking about church. And I realized that we now have to be very careful with our words to define the distinction between our building, our congregation, our mission, and our worship services. And it was very easy up until March <laughs> to say church, and we all quickly in our minds went through all of the possibilities and knew what the other person was talking about. We knew if the person was talking about 10, 15 on Sunday morning in the sanctuary. We knew if they meant, I'll meet you at church, meaning I'll meet you at the building. They knew if we said, well, um, our church um, supports Biloxi. Well, we would know that our, our congregation supports Biloxi, our mission in Biloxi. But now we are 
really having an opportunity to define what that all means because we are not worshiping at 1015 in the sanctuary together as a community at 3420 Jersey Bridge Road in Davenport, Iowa. We are worshiping whenever you turned on from Zoom or from Facebook, wherever in the world you are. We, um, we have people watching in Northern Ireland, in California, in Florida. We have people joining us for Bible study through Zoom. Um, 8 a.m. Monday through Friday, you're welcome to join us anytime. We have people, again, from Florida, from here, from North Carolina. We are a congregation that are people who have committed to Edwards Church by becoming an official member and, and having a ceremony around that, promising to be a committed support person to this congregation, committed to each other in spirit and in talents, both time and finances. And we have people who now are part of us because you've stepped into our world through social media. Perhaps you have taken the next step and joined us at Bible study or prayers or one of our uh, book groups or our studies. Maybe one day you'll come to our building and that will be a blessing to us, but maybe you'll ever only ever join us on Zoom. So our congregation is expanding and growing. Our church is growing and expanding in ways we, we didn't see on March 12th, not even March 13th when we went live for the first time. We knew years ago we needed to change and we had no idea what that was gonna look like and only God could come up with this, right? Zoom, um, it, it, it's a miracle to me. It is an absolute miracle. And this building itself, this, I've, I've taken a couple of tours. Maybe I need to do some more tours in these, uh, in the services, but we have a beautiful building and we have an addition on the building, which is fully paid for that has, um, updated it and given us a better, uh, entrance in the front and offices and updated space that we've been using before COVID um, for meetings and coffee hours and things like that. We have we have an entire education wing that currently Quad City Interfaith is renting part of our space, but we have more space that could be used by the by the community. We have um, beautiful grounds in front of our building and behind our building, and we have apartment dwellers right around us that have joined us for our concert and for our trunk or treat. And we're looking at this spring and this summer having more activities on the front where people can join us around from the neighborhood. Our building is part of our community. It is the heartbeat of our community, just like your home is. But that is not your family, right? Your family is all over the place just like our family for Edwards is beyond our walls of this building. But this building gives us the opportunity and the ability to meet together in person when allows. It gives us a place to worship, a place from which to record, even though sometimes I'm other places recording, but you seeing this, this sanctuary is a place for worship and will be a place of communal worship again at some point. This is a place where people have learned together, where children have, have grown their faith and, and grown their spirituality, who have, have learned about worshiping together, who have learned about the importance of community that stands up for what's right, for community who, who shows up at Pride Fest, who, who marches in the Pride Parade, who, who has um, stood up against the Vietnam War, who is learning and growing about their own racism, about our own need to be anti-racists. We are standing up for those who have been, um, been kept from church because of who they love. We have um, opened our sanctuary to people um, and, our, and our hearts and our, and our life to people for whom gender is not an easy answer for them 
who are uh, gender fluid. We have learned about things that seemed very foreign to us and we have said, okay, we will make space for people. Ours is not the only way. And we have grown in faith and knowledge and wisdom in this place. And we will continue to do that both in this building eventually, but also because of this building. Our treasure is not the building. Our treasure is this jar which holds our community. You can be a part of this jar that holds you wherever you are through your prayers, through your presence, and yes, through your financial gifts. Because you know what? We don't get the lights and the heat. Well, there's no heat on in here, but we don't get the lights. We don't get the pastor. We don't get the secretary. We don't get all of those other things without finances. So if you are somebody who is able to support us financially, we thank you for that. And we offer you the opportunity to um, give by texting, which you can see at the end of the service, there'll be a, a slide with that information. You can go to our website, which um, if you haven't been there yet, it's gonna be a nice surprise. We have a new website. And that comes from the gifts of this jar. And this jar is growing. And because of the ways in which we're able to move out into the community from this building, we are able to minister and help people learn of the unbounding gifts of grace from God, of, of Jesus' love and commitment to each one of us teaching us how to build the kingdom right here, right now, and also be with him forever. Will you consider becoming a part of our congregation? Amen.